Hi, I'm Wyatt. And I'm Grace. And you're listening to Our Dad and your host of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. All right, guys, welcome back to the Lifestyle Asset University podcast. We've got it. We're coming at a little bit different format than we've done in the past, and I'm really, really excited about it. We're going to start interviewing some of our members, some of the people who have who are going through that process of building their portfolio of lifestyle assets. And today, I've got one of my best friends, been, been a good friend of mine for a long time, got into the lifestyle asset game uh, a little over a year and a half ago, two years ago, started building his, his first property, and uh, just having a lot of fun inside of our group. And uh, one of my best friends, his name's Dave Savulich, it's Dave and Kelly Savulich, uh, Dave's joining us today. And just wanted to chat with him a little bit about his, his experience and his process and you know, um, and, and I think that's what we're going to start taking this podcast to do. Really, people all across the country, we've got multiple members um, that are going to be joining us in the next couple of weeks here that just talking about their experience and their experience in this game of vacation rentals and what it's meant to them. All different backgrounds, all different experience levels. And um, today I want to talk to, uh, to Dave a little bit, introduce him to you guys and uh, just ask him some, uh, some questions and just have a little conversation about what it's meant to him to be a part of Lifestyle Asset University, but more importantly, what it's meant to him to start building his portfolio of vacation rentals. And so Dave, welcome, my friend. Hey, uh, Sean, good to, good to see you, buddy. Glad to, <laughs> glad to be here. I'm honored to, uh, to be on the podcast, so this will be fun. This is fun. Those of you that are just listening, you can't see this, uh, this nice beard Dave's got going. We're, <laughs> Dave and I go to Alaska every year. He's, he's growing this, this Alaska beard out. So those of you that are seeing it on YouTube or Facebook or wherever we post the video, you can see that. L- looking good, buddy. I'm not, I'm not there yet. Hey, listen, this, this started out, I typically start growing my beard now for the Alaska trip, but this was a, a March 10th uh, COVID beard that's now turned okay, into the Alaska beard. Okay, all right. So, so it started as the COVID <laughs> yeah. beard. Now it's, now it's the Alaska beard. I like it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, man, give, give everybody a little background of, of uh, yourself, um, where you came from, who you are. Tell us a little bit about your family. Get it, let us get to know you a little bit. Uh, yeah, sounds good. So, uh, so I have three kids and a wife. Uh, my wife's Kelly. I have three. Uh, I have a daughter who just graduated from high school. I have a junior high son and a, uh, a junior high daughter. Um, they're, uh, they're pretty awesome. We, we love to travel. We love to do things together. We love the outdoors. Um, you know, Sean and I, like you said, have been friends for a long time. And, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to, to kind of learn from him about the lifestyle asset university and, and about a short term rentals. And, and man, I was, I, I couldn't wait to get involved and I couldn't wait to, to, to be a part of this. And, uh, it's, it's been nothing but amazing. So it, I couldn't, can't, can't say enough good things about it. And, uh, you know, our property has been awesome. So it's been, awesome. it's been amazing. Awesome. You and you've uh, you've owned uh, just a regular vacation rental, haven't you? I mean, not a vacation rental, actually, just a vacation home previously. Yeah, yeah. So I owned a I owned a cabin up in the mountains for about eleven years and loved it. I mean, we had so much fun and 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 we spent a lot of time up there. But as our kids got older, we spent less and less time up there. And and the reason why short term rentals really got me excited is because I couldn't stand to use my property twice a year and the rest of the year it just sat vacant. And so my investment just sat there. We loved it when we used it, but we only used it a couple times a year. So we ended up selling, um, you know, you, you and I, you, you introduced me to this program and I jumped in and I master class and, and, and learned everything that I could. And, uh, and so we turned the, you know, that, like that investment from the cabin into a property in St. George, Utah, that now we still use two or three, four times a year, but someone else has helped paying for it. And that to us is, is the most amazing thing. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about that property. You, you've got your, kind of got your first lifestyle asset. Tell us a little bit about that process. Um, you know, I know about it, but tell, tell the listeners like how you found it, what you did. Yeah. What you was, it, was it something that you put some work into? Tell us a little bit about how that process went. Well, my, you know, my wife, Kelly and I, we, we love the outdoors. We love to hike. We love to fish. We, you know, we, we love doing things with the kids and the family. We love to travel. So we, the first and foremost for us was, Hey, let's find a place that we enjoy going to. So we, we bought a place, a, a new construction, brand new property in St. George, Utah. Um, 
the it's 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 if you if any of you who are listening, if you want to go take a look at it, it's www.stargazerstgeorge.com and Saint is S T George.com. Check it out. It's a great property. It's it's doing fabulous. But for us, we wanted a place that we could go and we could vacation. And we've been able to use it and we've been able to hike and, and fish. It's got a great pool and all that kind of stuff. So you know, that's really what got us into it is one, we wanted a place that we could vacation. And then like, you know, it's paying for itself now. Awesome. Awesome. And, and it's, uh, and I'll post your website so people can go check it out in the, in the links on the, on the notes on the podcast or wherever we're posting the video so they can check it out. So that, that property, um, you guys have now, you, you, you do get to go enjoy it. You get to use it. Um, starting to get set up that website you shared with them. Um, that's your website, correct? You, you've got that. You kind of manage that. Um, tell us a little yep. bit about how the management yep. goes. Do you, do you manage the property yourself? Do you, do you hire a management company? And is it, how does that work? No, we, we, we don't manage it ourselves. I, you know, I have a full-time job. I don't need another job. And I wanted something that was real turnkey, that was easy, that was a simple solution for my family and I. And so we, we hired a, a great management team. Uh, a management group that handles it. So we don't do anything. I, I receive uh, emails when I, when bookings come in and I receive an email for a statement at the end of the month and, you know, giving me an idea of what, what rent and what amounts have come in and so forth, but they really handle everything. And I think, and this is a key for those out there who are listening is make sure that you do the due diligence to find a good management group, because that can take a lot of hassle out of your stresses, the situation. And in fact, just to give you kind of an example, one of the mistakes that, you know, we made and, and we changed is we had a different management group for the first couple of guests that came and stayed at our place. And we just weren't happy with the way that things processed. I mean, they were okay, but, but we knew we could get better. So we parted ways and we interviewed and we got another management group and they're fabulous. So that is a key when you're setting up your properties to make sure you get a good, good management group. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I'd like to just add to that. And, and you know, this as being a member of the program and part of the program in, in, in that kind of that masterclass or that process blueprint that we've laid out for people is that is probably one of our longest lessons on is selecting the right management company and why it's so important. And if I could say probably the largest mistake that a lot of people make is rushing in and just choosing a management company. And they say, hey, listen, I want full service or I want the hybrid approach or whatever whatever right. management structure they decide, they just pick one. And because they all seem okay in the beginning, but it need, it's almost like hiring an employee, right? You, none of us that, that, are, that have ever gone through that hiring process, it's not a fun process. And you have to take, right. look at the resumes, you have to do the interviews. And you have, to, you have to take the time to do that to select the right one. Because if you don't, like what happens is you, you select one and you get into it and it's not the right fit. And if it's not the right fit on the management right. side, it, all of a sudden that, that turnkey investment be, can become, you know, a, a, a big deal that is definitely not the turnkey you were looking for, right? And, right. It can be, yeah. and it detracts from the customer experience. It detracts from your experience as an owner. Um, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a domino effect of a bad experience and you really have to make that adjustment, make that change, take that selection process serious. And just because a full service management company says they're full service, if you interview five full service management companies, they're all gonna offer you something different. And right. you know, full service yeah. doesn't mean equal, right? It's like, um, you, you really have to go through that process to understand what they're doing. So absolutely uh, appreciate you sharing that because that is a big mistake a lot of people make. And, and it's, it's yeah. probably the most common mistake that I hear even within our program, within our group of people that actually have been taught how to do this. They, they'll, you know, we, we kind of skip through that process. It's like, you know, I, I, I tell, and, and uh, no offense to all the dentists out there listening, but it's like going to the dentist. None of us really want to go to the dentist, but some dentists make it a better experience than others. Right. And so, right. Um, yeah, you know, absolutely. We, we have to go through that process. So awesome, man. Well, um, what about other, other, you know, that, you know, that kind of a, a, that was a good mistake that, you know, that you could have avoided or, or could have wish you would have maybe done differently. What are some of the other compromises or aha moments that you've had throughout the process? Well, you know, when you, when you look and you're in the market to, to find a, a 
you know, a, a property, you want to make sure that you stay within your budget. And obviously, hey, if we had all the money in the world and, you know, we, we would buy the biggest, the best, you know, with a private pool and, a, you know, all the amenities and things like that. But I think the key for us is, you know, I'm glad that we didn't delay getting into the game because we didn't, you know, we weren't able to buy a five, 6,000 square foot place. We bought a four and a half, four bedroom, four and a half bath, amazing place that we could afford that was in our budget and, and we're in the game. The thing that I wish that we probably would have done differently is I, I, I wish we would have bought two of them because this first one is doing so amazing that, you know, it was, it was in a new phase of construction in this, this resort area and there were a couple of them up for sale, but, you know, I was a little worried. I was a little uncertain. This was kind of new to me. You know, we bought one, but man, I think to myself, if we could have bought another one, man, that would even been better. But I would say to the listeners, just don't, don't continue to wait. If you're financially just okay, you don't have to be in a great financial position or, you know, wealthy, but if you're in an okay financial situation, get in the game, find a place that's, you know, that you like to travel to, that you like to vacation to, and, you know, do your di- due diligence on the, on the property and the location, but, you know, get in the game. Cause I think if you, if you work hard and put into it, you know, everything you can, you, you're going to be successful like we have been. Awesome. Yeah. Great advice. And, and this isn't, you know, we don't talk about it being a no money down game, right? This is one of those, it's, it, you're going to have some skin in the game. You're going to have your down payment, but you don't have to yep. buy, you know, the $4 million property, the million dollar property for that man. You can buy yep. something yep. that works within your budget. And, and many times it doesn't take as much as you think to get into it. It, and you yeah. find properties, you know, that we always think of like the Newports and the Aspens and the Park Cities, these class right. A resort towns that, you know, your, your acquisition price is so high. And we think of that when we think about buying a vacation home. But there's so many markets across the country, these backyard resort areas that the weekend warriors go to, you know, they're regionally known outside of major metropolitan areas and the acquisition costs are relatively affordable you know, and, and yep. it can be a lot yep. more than may, maybe you think. And they can be really fun properties to own, really profitable properties to own. And once you understand kind of the profit drivers in those areas, you can really maximize that asset. And and I always say, people always say, you know, what do you think the market's doing? When should I buy? When was the best time to buy? The best time to buy any long-term real estate asset was yesterday. The next best right. time right. is right now, right? And so, right. so that, yep. that kind of is the point you're saying is you, to get in the game, don't wait for the perfect market or the until you can afford the dream house or whatever else. The sooner you get in the game, the sooner you're going to afford the dream house, right? Yeah, well, you always have, you know, when you make that investment, you always have a brick and mortar, you know, property. So, you know, it's, it's going to go, it's going to, you know, it's going to continue to, to grow and continue to, you know, be worth more every single year. Um, you know, it's different than when I tell people and I talk to people, it's different than having the stock market. I mean, it's up and down, it's challenging, but you know, when you buy a property over the next couple of years, it's going to appreciate, you're going to have, it's going to be worth more. So, and most people are in it for the long haul. I mean, my wife and I, we're in it for 20 years. So we hope to pay it off and, and use it as some a retirement when, uh, when we're ready to retire. So, awesome. yeah, yeah. And, and that, these are, you know, these are long-term real estate investments. This isn't something we're in for the short term, right? We're doing this for the long term. And so right. we make decisions for the long term, but we call them lifestyle assets because they add significantly to our lifestyle right now, right? It's, there's a reason that people go buy $200,000 boats. It's not because it's an investment, but they don't mind spending that money because of the memories and the lifestyle upgrade that they get with it. Right. Uh, the right. vacation yeah. homes kind of fulfill both of those those check both of those boxes, right? It's a great investment, but it checks that same box as if we went and bought us this, the nice boat or whatever, the, the luxury item that's a depreciating asset because we now own a, an, awesome, uh, an awesome property that's fun to own that we can go share with our family. We can go have memories. And, and, you know, and I think that that's an overlooked aspect of building this type of portfolio for a lot of people until you realize right. what that means. Yeah, yeah. That's so. for sure. Well, and I think too, and I'll just, I want to add a couple of things is, you know, with your, with your master class program, I mean, I had no real estate background, so I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I had no idea. I mean, it was a little, it, it gave me a little anxiety because I wasn't sure what to do, but 
you know, by taking the course and going through the process and going through the eight weeks, I mean, I felt like I could be successful in this world. And, and that for me was like, that was huge for me. That was kind of the aha moment that like, Hey, I've officially, we've officially paid our bills and we've had enough renters this month and our check was bigger than the, the, the money that was going out. I mean, for me, that was my aha moment and said, geez, we can do this and we can be successful. And, you know, 18 months ago, I would have said, oh, man, I don't know. I'd love to get into it, but I, I don't think I'm qualified. Right. And, and we, we have a tendency to second guess ourselves and wonder, especially uh, it, it's just like anything else. That first property is by far the hardest one to buy, right? Because yeah. We, we, yeah. we wonder if we can do it. And I'm glad you brought that up because we all hit that point where we say, I can do this, right? Holy crap, this right. works. And it, it's really fun and it's a fun space and it's a, you know, it's one of those types of investments that just is fun to do. It, it's why we love it. Yeah. It does, it's not the, yeah. it doesn't mean it's the end all be all for anything. Every real estate asset class has its pros and cons and vacation rentals are no different by any stretch. They have, they just happen to check a lot of boxes that we really particularly like. And, right. and it's right. an asset that is fun to own. It's fun to, you know, brag about, you know, our vacation homes to our friends and say, hey, let's go, you know, come up to the lake house, come down to the desert, come over to the beach, whatever we, whatever that portfolio looks like, that's fun. You know, that's fun to do. Yeah. Yet, when you get your statements and you realize, holy crap, all these bills are paid and I got some extra, somebody else is paying for this yeah. amazing house and experience and everything else. Right. And I've got some extra money. Then that's a, that is a pretty good aha to, to share. And that's, that's yeah. awesome. So, and you know, you, the one, yeah, yeah. the one, the one thing that's good is, uh, you know, when, when, and this happened today, um, is when I, I had a personal, personal weekend booked in October for my family and I to go down there. And I got a call from a, a you know, a friend's coworker that said, Hey, they want that same weekend. And we canceled our weekend and, and we're going to make money that weekend. I mean, that's, that's when you know things are going good when you're canceling your vacations to, to book it for some, somebody else. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's happened several times, you know? So yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. pretty exciting. Yeah, that's fun. And, and that is fun. And it's fun, you know, and, and I, and, and we just have, like I said, we could talk about this stuff all day, every day. Well, I wanted to, I want to keep these, you know, kind of short and, you know, so that people can listen to them and, and kind of get a feel for what other people are doing and saying. You mentioned the master class. Obviously we have, you know, we're going to try to share as much information out there on our podcast, everything else that we have. But if you really are looking for a process to follow, we're kind of our, our just overall philosophy about owning these types of investments, which it is different than what a lot of other people talk about. Um, you know, we really focus on buying them, not that uh, we're, we're no, and owning them for the long term. There's a lot of people who talk about arbitrage and co-hosting, and there's nothing wrong with those models. Um, for us in particular, right. we like owning the assets. Um, and, and, and if it's something that you're interested in, like kind of just seeing what we do and how we do it, go look to at lifestyleassetuniversity.com and watch the case study. Keep tuning into these, these podcasts. We're always going to have new members and new people. Some people that have bought properties and some people who have large portfolios, some people who are just starting the process. So you'll hear from all different people and different uh, aspects of it. And Dave, you're in a unique situation, buddy. Um, you joined me. We've known each other for a long time. And you came to me uh, a little while back, not too, not too long ago, and just said, hey, man, this, is, this has been, you know, a, a life-changing deal for me. And I know there are people that are in my position, that I, the, the position I was in a year ago. And that's like wondering, will this work for me? Will this, is this something that can happen? And asked how we could, how we could share that. And, you know, obviously we're on the podcast sharing some of it, but um, it, and I invited you to start taking some strategy sessions with people and being a part of Lifestyle Asset University. So, you know, we're really excited. That's just getting started. So actually, um, you know, there's nothing for sale on our website, guys. The only thing that you have the opportunity to do is just chat with, chat with myself or Dave and, and uh, get on there and, and book a call. So um, tell us a little bit about how that's been. That just barely started. Are you excited about that? I know, I know you are, but uh, it's kind yeah. of fun to, no, to get it make help help somebody else through that process right right i mean that's that's i mean that's the that's the complete fact i mean i i was, I was in the folks that are out there right now that are questioning whether they're deciding if they want to do it they've stated the vrbo so many times and they've said hey uh, man I, what if we own our own what if we had our own one of these 
And I was that guy. I was that guy two years ago. And now I own a property. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm still a beginner in this process and still learning. But, you know, my, my wife and I, our goal is to have five properties in 10 years. We're now looking for our second property, maybe diversify a little bit, maybe now have a, a, a cabin or a, a mountain home because we have one kind of in the desert. But I was so excited. I learned so much. I came to you, Sean, as you know, and said, hey, I want to be a part of this. I've told all my neighbors. I've told my friends. Like, I want to get this word out. So absolutely, I'm taking calls. I, I want to talk to these folks. I want to, obviously, you know, when we take these calls, there's been some due diligence prior. And those that, are, that, are, that we're talking to are interested and they're excited. We just want to help them. We just want to give some information, some details. And, and I think the, the best part is, you know, I have some experience, personal experience going through it. So I hope to, to make those and, and to share my thoughts and my ideas with them. I, one of the biggest misconceptions is you got to have a lot of money to down to, to get started. And, and I'm the first to say, like, I don't have a lot of money. I mean, I had enough. We, we got a second home. We had 10% down, you know, we had to buy the furniture, but you know, as you look at it, it was, it was not that hard to get in, but without the master class and without the coaching, uh, there's no way I would be as successful uh, as, as we have been without it. So I'm excited. So everybody that's out there that's just unsure or not, jump on to the, to the website, schedule a call, and let's just talk. Let's just talk. We'll answer some questions. And if, you're, if it you know, sparks some interest and, and we want to move to the next step, we will. So Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm so excited about it. It's, it's just really fun. I've always done the, I've always done the calls and the strategy, like the strategy sessions, I call them and just, and, and the agenda for those calls is just to answer questions. There's not a, it's right. literally we get on and, and, and I, I ask people and we try to answer their biggest questions and it's so fun for them to have the opportunity, honestly, in my position to, to have, have them talk to somebody like you that was in their spot not too long ago, right? We've been doing this right. for a long time. And, and so it's, it's nice for people to be able to just say, Hey, listen, you know, this is just another regular guy. And, um, and, right. and it's so, it's such a fun group and I appreciate you doing it. I'm really excited. I'm excited that people have the opportunity to chat with you. Um, as we go down this road, I know that, uh, for myself, it, uh, people always ask us why we do this. I never in a million years thought I would enjoy teaching people. And, you know, it just wasn't something that I even was on my radar, right? And Tony Robbins always said fulfillment or success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And, and I remember going through our business and being, you know, investing and doing the real estate and, and having some great success. And I, I was invited to speak on somebody else's stage at one point. And, and we had, you know, it was, a, it was a crowd of like 2000 people at a conference and it was, there was just something about that. Once we kind of shared our story and taught on that stage and then people calling us and saying how awesome it was that, you know, what we were sharing, it wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't even feel like I was sharing anything that groundbreaking by any stretch, but, right. but to hear people yeah. tell you that they, that you'd help them change their lives. And so I'm excited for that. I know you, you feel the same way. You're like this, you know, I just want to answer some questions and, and uh, see if it works for somebody. It doesn't work for everybody. It's not for everybody, but if it is, it can be a lot of fun and it's fun to be able to talk right. to somebody that was, you know, a little bit hesitant. We always second guess ourselves and kind of overcomplicate things. And many people think they can't do it. Another thing that you mentioned um, that, that is so important for people to realize is you don't have to have, you know, a huge portfolio of these properties to make a difference. You, a handful of properties makes a huge difference. One property right. can make a big difference. And, and you're seeing that right? You're seeing that with your first property. And, and we have so many people that, uh, you know, the, across the country, they're seeing that. And it's fun. like most, most people that we talk to are looking for a handful of properties and, and, and that's, you know, that's going to supplement retirement and ultimately make them more money than their earned income ever made them. And so that's right. a lot of fun, right? So, so listen, man, we're going to wrap it up. What, uh, any other, any other questions or closing thoughts or anything else that, uh, that you'd like to throw out there or share or ask me or any, any of the above? Uh, the only thing I would say is, you know, for, like I said, you know, if you're out there and you're uncertain, but you feel like you want to get in this market, ca call us, talk to us, let us give you some more details. Let us answer you some questions. Let us strategize. But I'm telling you this masterclass, there is so much information in there and, 
I, I'm thoroughly impressed what you put together because I'm telling you there's hours and hours of just marketing gold that people are going to absorb if they, if they join. But the one thing that I, I, you know, I think I've gotten a few questions and so forth is, you know, we're going through a pretty tough time right now as a, as a country and, and this is society and, you know, with the pandemic. And I, and I'm, I know some people are worried like, hey, is this not the right time to get into it? But so what would you say uh, to somebody that's, you know, asking, hey, is this the right time? Should I jump in? Should I wait till all this passes or, or should I take advantage? Yeah. It's a great question, and there is a lot, of, a lot of things going on. And first, you need to audit if you're in the right position to take advantage of some of the things going on right now, right? You know, they're, they're, if you're in that situation personally that, that it's a little unpredictable and may not, you know, that, that the, the, you know, economically you could be affected or whatever else, right. so you have to think about that, right? That's, you don't want to ever jump in and bite off more than you can chew ever in, in, in any situation. So you have to really look at that and really take a – an honest approach to that. But on the flip side, there's other, there's other industries and things that are just thriving right now and are able to take advantage of some of this. What we're seeing, what happened in, in March when it, when it all kind of came out was everybody's calendars really just, just cleared out in April. Right. It literally fell off. Yeah. Like yeah. Ever, Cancellations all like, and yeah. what's going on. Right. And then in May, at the end of April, it just shot right back up and demand has, right you know, across the country in almost all markets is domestic travel is just for, and short term rentals are the preferred way for people to stay right now. It's, it's unbelievable. Right. The, yeah. the demand. In fact, one of the guys I was talking to the other day, he has a lake house in Connecticut and um, he averages about $850 a night, his nightly rate. I don't even know if I told you this day, but he averages $850 a night this year. He's getting $3,000 a night because the man is, Oh my God. And so wow. there are markets that the demand is just through the roof. And that, that presents some challenges too. Like if I'm going to that market, I have to realize that that's not going to last, right? I can't run my right. numbers based on $3,000 a night. So, so the point of that though is that there are areas that, that I mean, this is a preferred way of travel. The short-term rentals are becoming very mainstream as far as a preferred method for a lot of people to travel. And Markets are going, there's going to be things going on all the time, right? Things are going to be good. Things are going to be bad. This pandemic, this, everything that's going on is no different. There are some areas that are suffering a little bit more than others. Like most of your kind of getaway areas, the, the urban areas, the, the outdoor areas, they're, they're thriving. Go into an inner city and they're not doing as well, right? There's those, those urban properties aren't doing nearly as well because the driver, usually urban properties have, you know, they have year round um, uh, profit drivers between business travelers and conferences and concerts and sports going on. And those properties typically do very well. And right now that stuff's shut down. So they're not doing as well. And the other thing that's happening is you're seeing a lot of people move out of those areas and which is driving right. the other areas that, that some of us own. Now, not a lot of, of our members or people that I talk to own properties as investors in those urban areas, mainly because those urban areas have such high restrictions and they always have way before the COVID hit because of the housing prices, right? The afford housing affordability. So most urban areas restrict short-term rentals anyway. And as an investor, we only buy in areas that it's allowed. Like if you go to an urban area and look on Airbnb, you're going to find thousands of them, but it doesn't mean that right. it's allowed. Right. And so, but that, so we typically don't invest in those areas just because they're, if there's heavy restrictions, but those areas are getting, are suffering right now. Some of your destinations that you have to fly to, you know, some of the island communities and, you know, some of those types of areas, they're, they're, you know, they're struggling right now because the travel restrictions. And so you have to, right. you have to really right. audit the areas and, and your long-term plans, right? This is something that's short-term, but those are th some things you have to think about on the short-term side, right? We make long-term plans, but we make short-term pivots based on markets. And so I, I, would, I would more audit my financial situation and if this is something I'm committed to for the long-term. If I'm in a good position to purchase, I, like I always say, yesterday was the best time to buy. The next best time is now. The demand is going to be there as long as you understand the profit drivers in the areas that you're, that you're investing in. And that's, that's right. really why we're in business, right? It's why we have these conversations. It's why we're, we talk about this all the time is really to try to mitigate the risk along the way and understand the market that we're getting into 
and understand if this is the right fit for, for ourselves and our other people. And so you just have to really ask yourself a few questions. And it more prompt has to do with your personal situation, your personal finances, your personal commitment to it for the long term than it does the market itself. Right. Because we'll go, we'll, we're going to go, this is a very hyper local type of a business. You're going to dive into the markets that you're looking at and they're going to have multiple profit drivers. They're going to have different reasons why people come and come and go. And if they're short term profit drivers, you know, there's, then you might have to, you, you have to maybe choose different locations, but if they're, if they're long right. term, you know, good foundational profit drivers, like a national park or, you know, the beach, those things that aren't going away and people are always going to go to, that's, you know, whether good, good times or bad times, we've seen that through recessions. We've seen it through COVID. We see, we've seen it through, there are things that people go to areas for, and those are the type of areas we enjoy going and visiting and investing in ourselves. So, yeah, good. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I, I definitely think you have to kind of look in the mirror more is where you start, right? Look in the mirror yeah, and, and decide perfect. if this is, if this is the, and, and let, let me just to, really quickly, because I get this question a lot, is how much money do you need to get into this, right? I get that question all the time. And, and a lot of right. times we think of the down payment, right? We think of how much we need for the down payment. And that's where, that's kind of where it stops. And there's more to it than just the down payment. Right. Yeah. You've got, and it's always based on the acquisition price, right? So you've got a percentage of the down, of the acquisition price for your down payment. Your first property, like you mentioned, you can buy it as a second home, you put 10% down. After that, you're probably putting 20 to 25% down because you're getting investment financing. So you've got your down payment. The second thing you have to consider is if you're buying a property that's not furnished and not set up and not ready to go, you've got your furnishings and setup cost. And that's going to be a budget. We tell people budget about five to 8% of the acquisition for that. And that's going to give you an okay budget. And we do it based on the acquisition price again, because you could have a three bed, two bath house that is $300,000 and you could have a three bed, two bath house that's a million dollars. Right. You know, they're the same right. area, you're going to spend more on the furnishings. The furnishings have to match the property, right? So it's still based right. on a budget of the acquisition price. And then what most people don't realize is if you buy a property that's not set up and is brand new and has never been a vacation rental, you're going to have right. a period of time where you're not making much money, right? And I tell people budget six to nine months to be able to pay those property expenses, whether you have that in the bank, if you don't have it in the bank, you have to have enough disposable income with your job to pay those property expenses for that amount of time. And that you're gonna have income in that amount of time, there's no doubt, but it's gonna be a roller coaster. It's gonna go up and down. And you, there's gonna be times where, you know, you're trying to get those first few people through and those first reviews and your, your pricing may be lower than normal to get some of those people through. And so you're not making the money that you should you know, that you, that you planned on when you ran your income projections, right? And so it's going to take you to that six to nine months and you should be able to do it sooner than that. But conservatively speaking, you, it could take you that long to hit that point. And, and you understand that because you did, you did a brand new property, right, Dave? You didn't, right. you didn't come out yeah. of the gates making your full mortgage payment right off the bat. No, no. And we were, when we did it, we were very conservative. We planned about a year and a half. We said, we got to have enough money to pay all the, 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 the bills each month for about a year and a half. And, and so we were a little bit more conservative, but I was, I'd rather be more conservative than not and make sure that I was okay with that. So, and yeah. you know, about, a, about the first year we started, you know, paying for all of our expenses and now we're, we're putting a few hundred dollars in the kitty. So it's been nice. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and that's what, you know, that's not real sexy to talk about, right? If I'm trying to sell a, a program to, to and, and coaching and everything else, just to get people to sell the dream, right? There's a lot of great things that can happen, but that's, that's more of a front end commitment and it doesn't appeal to everybody, but we like to talk about what it's really going to take because if you get into it with this realistic expectations, it can turn into something pretty special, pretty quick, you know, right. six to nine yeah. months or a year or five years, frankly, you're not going to pay it that long, but you know, at the five year point, the older we get, the, the faster we realize that flies by. And yeah, and absolutely. This is, this is a long term process and, so, um, yeah, that, that's a lot of good stuff, man. I really, really appreciate you joining us today. I'm really excited um, to have you kind of as part of the team and, and being, making yourself available for people to talk to and, and chat with. So if you, if you um, have any interest in hearing a little bit more about getting some of your questions answered, go to lifestyleassetuniversity.com and watch the, watch the training video. It's about an hour long and it's not a sales pitch. You, it's not, it's not like, you know, they've seen it. Many people have seen it. This is not a, this is not a webinar sales pitch. Um, 
this is this is the nuts and bolts of what we believe and how this business works, kind of setting that expectation and understanding the, the ownership of the, you know, the lifestyle of owning vacation rentals. And uh, at the end, you'll have the opportunity to schedule a time to chat with us. And if, if, if you yep. choose to do that, we'd love to chat with you. And then we will be back for uh, you know, every other week. We're going to um, have a new uh, member interview that has been doing this. And so, Continue to ch uh, t chime in, subscribe, um, add it to your favorites, whatever you have to do on whatever platform you're listening on. And again, we really appreciate it, Dave. And thanks for joining us, buddy. It was, it was an awesome chat. Yeah, thanks. Anytime. Happy to come back and uh, best, best of luck to you. And uh, let's keep this thing rolling. So thanks again, Sean. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, we'll see you guys. We'll, we'll chat with you next, uh, next time. Peace. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. Share this with other people you think need to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey Grace, is there a website? Yes! For more amazing content and expert advice, visit bodicey.com. Thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.